In this video, we'll be going over a statistical phenomenon called overfitting and how we can avoid this big problem by something called cross-validation. So it's a, pretty, it's a pretty simple thing. Let's say you have this set of points right here, and you're trying to find a prediction function for it. Well, you can choose some kind of linear prediction function, maybe you want to use a quadratic one, but maybe if you're naive, you think, why don't I just use a prediction function that runs through every single point? Then I'll have no error whatsoever. And we'll say, okay, let's try that. So that means your prediction function is literally going to look like this. All I'm doing right now is connecting every single data point in my given sample. Now let's really think about what we've just done. So we have these points here. We've connected with each one with a line between uh, one point and the next consecutive one. Now the good thing, let's, let's go over the one good thing first before we dissect this and really say why this is a really, really, really bad idea. The good thing is R squared and uh, R squared, you can find the video on that explaining what that is here. But uh, basically, just to go over what it is, it's it's telling you how good your model fits the data. R squared, in this case, will be 1 because there is a perfect fit between the data points you're given and the model you generated. That is, there's no error whatsoever. Every single point lies exactly on the model. So you're thinking, great, what, why is this bad? Why would we ever use a linear model when we can use this? So for a linear model, let me just draw it. A linear model, so an ordinary least squares regression, which we'll go over in a future video, uh, the line of best fit would look probably something like this. So this, you say, why is this good? Because this line I've drawn goes through none of the data points, whereas the purple curve goes through every single one of the data points. So now let's dissect why this purple curve is very, very bad and why this linear curve is actually better. So what's the goal here? We're trying to generate both this black line and this purple line. Both their jobs are trying to predict something. So given some x value, some value of the uh, explanatory variable, we're trying to predict what's the value of the y variable going to be. So this black line and purple line are both trying to do that. Now, the purple line is great for the data we already have. And the black line, maybe it doesn't fit that data as well. But the true thing is that we're going to be given some new data point, something outside the sample, and we're going to try to predict the y value for that. So if we just plot a few more points, I'll plot them in, let's say, blue, that are coming from the same population as these orange points, then maybe they'll look something, maybe one will come from here, maybe one will go here, maybe one will go here, okay? Let's look at these blue points, which are very reasonable candidates from the population, given the trend of these orange points, and see which model predicts them better. So we're just going to do that basically by looking at how far away are the y values, the true y values from the predicted y values. So doing that, we see that for this blue point right here, the black line is better because we have an error of this much, whereas for the purple one, we have an error of this much. So we see that the black line is better for this one. Now for this one, which one's better? Again, it's the black line because we have this much error versus pretty much more than double that much. And again, this one, the black line is better. Uh, and then we have an error of a lot more for the purple one. So we see that for most of the points that are coming from the same population as the orange points, the black line is going to be better because the black line is not predi it's it's predicting the actual uh, variation in the y variable, whereas the purple line is just kind of predicting the error. It's very tailored towards the random error in these orange points and not tailored towards the actual y variation that we're seeing. So this is the problem called overfitting, and that's why you should never make a model that is just tailored towards these. You should always keep in mind that there's th this is going to be used to predict other y variable y, uh, y instances given x instances. Okay, so how do we prevent this? So the big problem was that I just took every single orange point that I was given and I made a model out of it. What I should have done is I should have reserved some of the orange points for testing. So I should have not put them as part of my model. I should pretend that they don't exist for now. And I should have made a model just based on the data I was given. So I pretend I'm just not given a few of these orange points and I just make a prediction model based on what other orange points exist. And then once I've made that model, I take these orange points, which I just pret uh, pretended don't exist, and I now consider their existence. I say that, oh, I'm given these points. How well do these behave given my model? If I had done that and I had not considered them at first, then I would have a true indication of how good this model is because this model was blind to those points. And when I give it, when I give it those points, it has no idea those even existed. So if it's a good model, it'll be able to predict them well. If it's a bad model that's tailored only towards the points that I had, then it's probably going to do a very bad job. And that's kind of what we see here. 
So we can easily prevent this using something called cross-validation. There's many kinds of cross-validation, but uh, here's just a basic one. So this is going to be very high level, very, you know, just like theoretical. So let's pretend this orange box represents a bunch of data I have, right? So all of it is just data. Now I'm going to reserve this much of it up from this line to the black line. I'm going to reserve this much of it for training. So I'll write that in blue here. And I'm going to reserve this other little piece right here for testing. So basically what's going on here is that when I run my regression, when I create my model, whether it's linear, quadratic, whatever, I'm going to pretend this testing set doesn't exist. I'm going to pretend all the data I have is from this orange line to the black line. And I'll feed in all of this data into my model. And I'll generate some coefficients. I'll generate some numerical model. Now I go ahead and bring out my testing set, which I have, which the model had never seen before, and I run these things through my prediction function and I see how well the predictions match up with the actual true values from the testing set. And that will give me an unbiased way to figure out whether my model, how good my model is fitting the actual data. That's just cross-validation. There's many different types. Uh, basically, one one variation you can make is how much of this data set should I reserve for testing and training? Usually your training set is like 90% and your testing set is like 10%, but you know you can vary it uh, as you want. You might get different results. But basically, just a short video on just uh, overfitting, which is a big problem, and how you can avoid it using different types of cross-validation.